Thank you very much to Revista Icala for inviting me to participate in the presentation of my article. Uh, my article is called The Linguistic Policy on Certification of Foreign Language Competence in the University of Antioquia, a Discourse-Based Analysis. Uh, this policy establishes the requirement of the certification of French language for the admission to postgraduate studies, as well as being a requirement for obtaining the university degree for undergraduate and postgraduate students. Likewise, it's an unquestionable requirement to participate in the Convocatoria Pública de Méritos for applicant teachers. The certification is mandatory for the selection of teachers and students. Um, it doesn't matter how quali high qualified the applicant is, if this certification is not fulfilled, the applicant is not admitted. Therefore, the impact that this linguistic policy has generated in the opening and the sustainability of the postgraduate programs in, and in teachers as well has been significant. This article is one of the products of my thesis master where I analyze two types of discourses. Those produced by whom are involved in the administration of the policy and those who are produced by whom are to fulfill with the foreign language certification demand. In this article, I specifically examine the former with the aim of analyzing their perception, perception sorry, their appreciations and their positions regarding what the policy means and establishes. Mm. I chose the critical discourse analysis in order to explore some assumptions on the linguistic policy and in order to unveil how from the administrative type of discourse the requirement of certifying the foreign language competence has been naturalized and legitimized. And how such a requirement serves as a mechanism for the compliance of the policy and it is the certification by itself which acquired a leading role. Mm, the certification requirement generates resistance against the linguistic policy and not so the assumed importance of the foreign language competence acquisition. That is to say, uh, the university community not only accept but also they consider the importance of learning a foreign language. But the certification requirement is seen as an obstacle for the possibility of growing professionally as it is a barrier for them to continue their studies and a labor career. Uh, some people ask me why I use uh, critical discourse analysis. They think that there are no visible inequalities to justify the use of this method of analysis. But uh, I used critical discourse analysis to expose tensions, not necessarily among radically opposed dichotomies, or rather not as explicit as those that are given between the master and the slave, or the inequalities between the woman and the man along the history, but there where the range of gray seems one single color. To think that the gray color is simply gray is a view so naive as the democracy is represented in a pot of mixture seeking a homogeneous mass. Therefore, what is analyzed is not the discourse of those who directly hold the power. In many cases, a concealment of the agent of the power is given by means of a feature of a speech that in critical discourse analysis, analysis is called nominalization. That is a kind of grammatical metaphor that can, for instance, make invisible agency and responsibility. The discourses can be categorized in, in two types. The, I mean the discourses that I analyzed in my thesis. The discourse to the service of the power and the discourse of those who resisted. Uh, we, are, we, as teachers, we, can be, we might become producers 
reproducers of a type of discourse that conveys ideological inculcation. Thus, um, we should be self-critical and reflect on what we consider our points of view, since they can be no more than inculcated truths. Before trying any change, I think it's necessary to analyze what is called our convictions, ingrained truths that become part of our fixed discourses, that in turn come from others' discourses and they go this way conforming an order of discourse in a sort of an intertextuality without a visible author, but with agents and fellows with causes and effects in a social order, transferring us fossilized opinions, speeches that have been naturalized as unquestionable as the common sense. To be aware of this represents an essential step to intend any change. The analysis of some text exposed in this article shows how a type of discourse works as ideological inculcation from the common sense or what is assumed or given for granted. That is, to assure that if an individual obtains a certification, it is therefore competent in foreign language. <laughs>